Hi guys, welcome, my name is Bill. Today we're gonna to look into the custom hook called Use Fuel Ray. A custom hook made for manipulating with dynamic form. And the motivation is so the custom hook can provide a really smooth performance for your form application and also provides really good accessibility for folks management. So first let's look into some of the props that come out from this hook. First we will need the name, which used as a key identifier for your array object. Second, we have control object, which is optional if you're using form context API. Should I unregister allow your custom hook to actually deleting the entire form value when the component gets amounted to? The key names serve as a unique identity of every individual field group itself. So React knows how to shift and moving item up and down. Last but not least, we have the rules object, which contains validation for your entire field array. For example, you can say the minimum length of the fuel array will be required as a three and providing with a validation message to guide your customer to validating your form. Also, let's have a look at some of the stuff that get returned from the custom hook. Now, the first very important thing the custom hook actually return is the fuels itself. So you can use the fuels object to render the component trees in your form application. And the rest of it is a bunch of utility function which allow you to manipulate and manage your form field array. Sweet, enough introduction. Let's actually go into a practical example and see how things works in real example. Now I have a very basic example in here which doesn't have anything except we actually importing all the React talk form methods in here. So first let's actually importing the first very important hook which is use form as the foundation. And we're likely going to use the register method and we will subscribe to the arrows form state and we're going to need to use control as well and next let's use the use field array and we're definitely going to use all the fields which to render out the actual ui and we want to provide a name in this case we can actually build a card each uh, form and we want to give that a control as well and that's pretty much kind of setting up the basic stuff. And what we can do is we can actually provide a default value here. So React hook form can actually better influence the type and doing type check on your behalf. So we're gonna call this cart. And let's putting down some default value in here. What we're gonna say, we're gonna have a name and we're gonna keep that as a string. And we want to have an amount and we're gonna use that as a number nice and uh, by this point in time if we actually change in the key name notice react so form actually doing type check on your behalf and we're pointing out that okay the default value that you provide doesn't look like the key name that's actually supplied so it's a very good way of actually validating your input and the good things maybe we also define uh, a type definition so we can actually reuse that type later on when we want to say do the calculation or validation or use it as a payload. So we're gonna use that as a card as well. And this guy is gonna be an array of, we're gonna say amount and, sorry, amount is gonna be a number and name is gonna be string. Oops, or a strong tag. And we can plug that into here. This also actually let us validate like the thing is actually working or not. And so this link, this is not working correctly. We must have a typo, which we did. Sweet, the type checking, it is working. Now, I think we have a pretty good base. Let's actually start getting into the UI. And like I said before, we're gonna actually use in the fields object, which is an object, we can an array of object, which we can map through it and returning the actual UI. So we're gonna return in here. Uh, section closing tab and we're going to pull out the fill and we also want to use in the index because that's how we're actually tracking the item order and like i mentioned before one of the very important part is actually giving each individual item a key and this allowed us to um, communicate with react that every individual item which has been rendered it does have its own identity so when we're actually shifting or swapping items, they will remain at the correct order. Now let's actually 
putting uh, two inputs in here, like we declared before, we have two input, which is name and amount. So we're going to use the register function in here, and we're going to say this is going to be a cart, and let's providing the index of this particular item, and then we're going to call a name. And the next guy, we're going to say it's going to be amount. Sweet. And notice that uh, the second input of amount is supposed to be a number. So let's actually changing the time to be number. And also, one thing we are pretty good at is actually uh, very stick very close with the native API, which is using value as number to converting the piece of string into a number. Cool, now we have two few in here. Let's improve the accessibility in here by providing a label. So it will, it will improve the, the screen reader to name out what this field is for. We're gonna call a name, and we want to do the same for the amount. Nice. Now we got this uh, pretty decent form in place. And next, let's actually start to leverage some of the method. And in this example, let's using the append and prepend, and maybe perhaps let's using remove as well, so we can actually dynamically input, uh, adding new item uh, and removing them. So let's adding those methods. We're gonna have append, prepend, oops, no, pre-tag, and let's also taking down remove. And let's adding those items in here. Give it a type as bottom, and we're gonna say, we're gonna have a pen, and we also have the prepend in here. And let's also give the onClick method, and we want to leverage those method as well. Now, one of the very important part in here is a lot of people used to do this. And if you're not using TypeScript, it's probably not going to give you a type error. But so you will need to provide a default value. So in this case, let's say we're going to provide name as bill and we start amount as zero. And one of the really powerful thing about React hook form is the TypeScript, TypeScript support. As you can see, if I, if I put some um, different type in here, it's going to put that as a string. And this will give a type error. So this improved the, the, the developer experience significantly uh, when you're building stuff. Nice, let's actually quickly try it out. So you can see a pen and a pre pens are working correctly. Let's change this to something a little bit more meaningful rather than put my name down. Uh, sweet, like that. And notice very importantly, every time I press a pen, the folks management is there. They're actually taking the customer to the right input. So no matter how big your field array is, your customer is not going to get lost. And that's one of the very important things that we have took form and focus a lot on accessibility and then focus management. Nice. Next, let's actually also adding a delete button. I notice I, every time I, I, you know, if you're not familiar uh, with the HTML, I always provide type of button. If you didn't provide that, the button will be treated as submit. So you're actually submitting the form rather than actually treat that as a button, just something to be aware of. And let's put down on click. And with the remove method, it's important to actually providing the index so it knows which one to remove. Uh, we got a, a typo in here somewhere, definitely something not closing correctly. Uh, let me see where did I make the mistake. Hmm, couldn't spot it. Oh, there we go. And that's working, sweet. Now we can actually just remove all of this guy, the back from um, everything to nothing. Now next, let's actually also adding some validation. I mean, this is the whole point of building uh, or using a form library. We want something to be validated before we actually get submit to the server. So let's, Put down the required, and as you can see, uh, if I decide to submit the form, ah, it made a mistake. We forgot to use the most important method, which is handle submit to wrap the the callback function in here. Now should have worked. 
sweet. Now if I submit and the folks management it there, it actually folks to the input that it is required. And next let's actually make the screen a little bit bigger. Um, and let's use the rules prop. And this is one of the pretty useful thing that I get a lot of people requ uh, requesting for is we can actually validate if they uh, please uh, pent at least one item. And with a rule like that, we can actually check the entire fuel array and you can use the validate method if you're not familiar with it. And this is actually going to return the entire fuel array. So you can perform some, you know, sophisticated validation method. This is the right data to be input. Uh, let me just quickly validating this. And we're going to actually print out the, the error message on the screen. And what we're going to do is because we're already subscribing to the arrows objects on the top, uh, if you didn't pay attention for just here. So we actually listen to that. Uh, we're going to listen to the card and we're going to look, we're going to listen to the root of the message. And like that, if I remove that submitting and this error message pop up, please at least enter one item. And if you append it again, it's going to be working. So the validation, everything is working correctly. We got submitted data in here as an array of uh, objects. Nice. Now let's maybe extending a little bit more. Uh, we want to actually, a lot of time we want to subscribe to the input value uh, and visually display something in here. And this is where we're going to use another hook and we're going to build another component. And, and what we want to showcase in here is how a React hook form can, you know, really give you a performance boost on isolating uh, a re-render. Uh, if I put down in here, and let's create a component on the top. Let's call it total amount. We're going to return that uh, now for now. And let me just quickly demonstrate that if you didn't pay attention, if I changing anything in here, notice the render count is stay as one. And if you actually decide to re-render the entire form and watch everything, you can just use the watch API. And this will actually return everything that is on the screen on every keystroke. Now, most of the time, this is going to be fine if you're building something fairly simple. But as, you as your application gets, um, with a lot of UI component, you probably have to worry about memorization or kind of isolating uh, the re-render if possible uh, without going through the reconciling uh, inside of React. Uh, in React Hook form, we, we actually give you a, a little bit, you know, form and boost in here because you can use something like use watch to completely isolating on the re-render and subscribing to individual fuel uh, value. So we're going to say, we're going to plug in the control in here. Uh, let's go to the bottom. Now we already plugged in. Sweet. Let's give it a type definition in here. And we want to put down the form values as generic uh, sorry about that that's a mistake and we'll get in here and we want to say uh, let's call it cart value because we don't want to subscribe the entire thing we can say we only want to subscribe to the cart and that's cool let's validate that and listen to the output of that and as you can see this is changing and the re-render happening and give us the latest value and the render counts to stay as one for the root. So next, let's actually building a function actually returning the, the, the total sum of all the items we are appending to the fuel array. So we're going to say, uh, let's call it just get total. And this is going to be a payload of form values cut. And which means we can actually iterate through and getting the total. So we're going to say total is going to be zero and we're going to return in the total and we're going to do a, a full loop in here, item of this payload. And what we can do is let's just quickly adding the, the total with what this item actually presented it, which is amount. And we, let's do a quick check because just in case it's because HTML input natively um, returning a string, but we actually add a value as a number. So they were passing the input from string uh, to number. But there are a chance it can become 
not a number. So we're going to check number dot is not number. If that's the case, we're going to return zero. Otherwise, we're going to take the item and out. Uh, let's do. Oops, let's do that. Sweet, just like that. We should be able to get in the the output of the actual total amount. So what's the error in here? Cannot use the S JSX element. Okay, that's cool. Let's put wrap that around with the P tag. That looks a lot better now. We got zero down the bottom. Cool, let's try this quickly. Try this out. Let's go. We got first item. Uh, you know, keep the mass simple. Let's add another one. We're gonna say it's gonna be four. That adds up as eight. And all we render it just happening on this particular component. So you can you can put a lot of complicated UI elements in here. Say for example, flipping the number. So it it give you interesting visual effects to your customer. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, it's it's really simple. It's really performant, and and it folks that accessibility for folks management really well on the validation parts um, and when you are pending and prepaying item. Sweet, I think I pretty much cover all the important aspect in here. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a question and down the YouTube comment section below, or just reaching out on the GitHub discussion section. I hope you find this video pretty useful and learn something new. And you know, try it out useful array at the very end, obviously. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next one. Bye.